What's up, YouTubers? Big Dog here. Welcome to another edition of Big Dog Movie Reviews. Uh, the first video where I actually review movies. Uh, it is a double feature video, I decided, so I will be reviewing two movies. The first of which being The Peanut Butter Falcon, the second one being It Chapter 2. Uh, I do want to say I will try and make my reviews as spoiler-free as possible, but sometimes spoilers need to be said to get my point across. That is especially true of the It Chapter 2 review. I def definitely have mm -hmm. some kind of spoilers in there. Uh, so if you haven't seen it and plan on seeing it, don't watch this one until afterwards. And then we can compare thoughts. So here we go. Peanut Butter Falcon. Uh, definitely a very funny movie. I really, there's a lot of good jokes, a lot of witty cracks in it. Very, definitely had some good laughs in there. Uh, I am a sap for these kinds of happy, feel-good movies. Make you feel all warm and fuzzy inside. And, um, they do, I, for whatever reason, I just like them. Maybe I'm just a, kind of a positive guy, so I like smile and be happy. Uh, the setting, I do like it. It is down south. It's in the deep south. Uh, kind of made for some very interesting scenery. So well some interesting characters. Some very beautiful scenery in the deep south with all the... All the fauna, or flora, my bad, flowers, plants. Um, the now I'm gonna yeah made for some great scenery, great characters. Uh, I am gonna discuss some three of my favorite scenes from the Peanut Butter Falcon. Next, just kind of saying what I liked about them. Uh, there is a boat building slash baptism scene that I really liked. Uh, it's filmed in a very interesting way. It shows quick segments of each baptism and the boat building intertwined. It's like chops to the baptism, then the boat building, then back to the baptism, back to the boat building. It's just like short five seconds clips of each and that nature. Uh, there's a voiceover of it, which just really added to the effect of the, what was going on between Tyler and Zach working together as well as the baptism it kind of just added like kind of a heaviness in my opinion made it feel like it mattered uh it showed just how well tyler and zach worked together uh i think it just really shows the chemistry they built over their journey up to that point it shows that they're willing to just work together put their minds together build something to help them get their fat get down to florida faster um so the next scene would be the campfire party scene. It shows just how close Tyler and Zach have become. Their relationship is sort of weird in the beginning. Tyler views Zach as, I, I think he feels for him and he wants to help him, but he definitely doesn't view him as a priority, definitely not a friend. At the campfire scene, I feel they definitely, you can definitely like call them friends after that. It kind of shows how close they've become, how much they really care about each other, especially on the part of Tyler caring about Zach. I think they really, he grew on him, and he just grew to see that he's just a guy with dreams and really wants to help him. Uh, next would be the breath-holding scene, where a third person comes into play for their journey. Uh, it says a lot about Tyler's character. He knows that, he know it's obvious that Zach has Down Syndrome, and Tyler knows that, especially since Zach straight up tells him. But I also think Tyler, he views him, he knows he has Down syndrome, but he doesn't view him as disabled. I think that it kind of really says a lot about Tyler's character. It's just, he, like, he wants other people to know that all because this kid has Down syndrome, he can't do, doesn't mean he can't do everything a normal person can. And he really believes that Zach is capable of everything anyone else is. Um, and he, Tyler also just really wants other people to see that, and as you can tell by the discussion he's having with this third person on the boat as Zach is holding his breath underwater. Um, and while on the topic of Tyler, I kind of want to talk about the whole acting in the movie. Everyone did a really good job, and especially Shia LaBeouf in my eyes. Zach may have grown on you, you grow to love him, you grow to care about him as a character, you want the best for him, but in my opinion, Shia LaBeouf as Tyler was the real star of the show. Uh, it's pretty clear that Tyler, that Zach, that Shia really did his homework and just studied how life is down there, how to act, how to talk. He appeared very well prepared and just kind of shows how talent, what kind of talent Shia LaBeouf has when he really wants to set his mind into a role. And it was very believable. Like, 
I would have, if I, there wasn't cameras around and I just saw Shia LaBeouf sit, going through the actions, probably would have thought he was an actual down on his luck crab fisherman. Uh, the Hillbilly Backwoods soundtrack was nice. I kind of have a soft spot for bluegrass music, so that was nice to my ears. As well as a couple of twists and turns I didn't see coming, especially at the very end. There's a couple good surprises. Uh, but it just really was a very entertaining movie. It kept my attention through the whole thing, and I really enjoyed it. Uh, now for the dislikes. There are, it wasn't a perfect film. There are some dislikes I would like to address. There is a atomic throw scene. It's very, 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 very obvious that it is special effects. Maybe some wire team went hoisting a guy on up on wires or CGI or whatever. It looks very fake and it really just kind of grinded my gears, but it's just, you'd have to see it to know what I'm talking about. It's pretty amazing that. It looks that way, if you want me to be honest. Um, Tyler's past. Uh, they did a good job of telling you about Tyler's past, but I guess I would like them to expand on it a bit more. They show like little tidbits of Tyler's life before someone's close to him passed away. And he was very happy and very ready to take on life, I guess. But then this person close to him passed away, and they show how that happened, really. They don't really leave you having any questions about Tyler's past, but I would like them to just kind of expand and show the downfall of, and the time in between that spent between this guy close to Tyler dying up until the start of the movie. I'd like to see more of like that in between and how he got so down on his luck and kind of so bitter, I guess is what I'm saying. And the final dislike is that it was ended very abruptly. I think it was just kind of, it's like curtain closed, right in the middle of a scene almost. I didn't really like that. It did have a short run time of only about hour 40, hour 50. So I'd say anything around two hours to 2.15 is probably the average movie, that's just me. Um, so I would like to use, have to see them see just like a few more minutes to just really explain how things ended. And cause it, like I said, just ended so abruptly. I would like to see more of their life after that scene. Just like a few more minutes is all I would need. But with that being said, it was a very good movie, and I did enjoy it very much. Um, I know it's not playing everywhere. I did have to drive 30 minutes to a theater to watch it. I did want to see it that bad, and it was honestly worth it. It was worth every penny and worth every minute of the drive. Um, so in my opinion, I feel Peanut Butter Falcon deserves an 8 out of 10. Very good movie. Definitely get go see it if you get the chance. Um, and it was just, it was just way pretty much what I was. I had high hopes for it, and it reached those high hopes. It maybe even exceeded them slightly. So definitely go see it if you get the chance. So now with Peanut Butter Falcon in the books, we move on to it chapter two. I get my note sheet here like normal. Put this one down here. All right, so same same deal. Likes, dislikes, final opinion, things of that nature. So, things I liked about It Chapter 2. Uh, all the flashbacks. It was honestly probably one-third to 33% to 40% flashbacks where it had the original kid actors from Chapter 1. Uh, and I really liked that. It really told a lot of unique things of each character and how just the thing like the gap between the first movie and second movie it really filled in a lot of those gaps um how scared everyone was in the beginning when they realized that they had to go back to Derry uh, shows that none of them were really expecting it to come back they just thought they defeated it that one time thought they were good to live their, li live their lives as normal as possible after that but uh, they were all each and every one of them were truly terrified when they discovered they had to go back to Derry because of the pact they made and it really just I think that just showed a deeper level to each character that they just weren't really expecting this to, to come back despite making the pact they did as kids um, 
especially it's staying on that topic, some people just wanted to say, forget it. And even after they got there, even after they got to Derry, they just wanted to say, forget it. We don't live here anymore. Why should we care? Let's get out of here. I just really think that shows some deeper character elements that just, they never really thought it was going to come back. Uh, Pennywise, creepiness. He was very creepy. Did a good job of that. He's a clown, weird clown, demon clown type thing. He should be creepy. They did a really good job of that. So I think Bill Skarsgård playing the, that part did phenomenal, if you ask me. Um, it was, in my opinion, a lot scarier than the first one. In my opinion, the first chapter, it chapter one. Uh, played a lot more to a creepy, ominous vibe, not a lot of jump scares, whereas It Chapter 2 did have a lot of jump scares, and it was just, I did, did, was rattled in my seat a little bit more, as well as jumping and screaming a lot. Uh, the acting was pretty well done. It felt like every actor was genuinely terrified, and like they were actually living the situation, not portraying a character in a movie. Um, I did enjoy how they continued the story as they did. I was kind of leery about them being adults in the second, in the chapter two. But I think it worked out really well, and it made for a nice element of the film. Uh, did They did do a rather good job of juggling six main protagonists. Uh, it's not always easy to have six main protagonists, but I think they did a really good job of portraying each character and each character's individual story, as well as the story of the whole group. I think they did a really good job just keeping each main character an individual person and not just a member of the original group. They each had their own respective character aspects and character characteristics, I guess is how I'd put it. And they weren't just one group of kids. They each ha had their own life to live. Um, that was it for the likes. Now time for the dislikes. Henry Bowers. Much like the first movie, I felt he was a very pointless character. Um, didn't really hold much value to it, at least after he discovered the influence of Pennywise. And in this movie especially, I thought he was even more pointless. You could take his scenes out of this movie without even... And with that, it'd be just as good as a movie, if not better, because there wouldn't be a pointless character thrown in the mix. Mm. Ending was rather cheesy. They had to shrink... Spoiler alert, they had to shrink Pennywise down to size, and they decided to do that by insulting him. To literally shrink him down to, like, the size of this whiteboard, because he was too big to fight otherwise. And they decided to insult him to shrink him down to size. Uh, I get the whole fear is power thing for Pennywise. If you're scared of him, the more powerful he becomes. But this just kind of took it, that whole thing, above and beyond. Uh, he just, they insulted him to shrink him down to size. I get if you were being, if you being afraid of him gives him power, but you shouldn't, be calling him a silly clown, a dumb clown, and just insulting him just felt kind of cheesy and not thought of well enough in my mind. Uh, with It and Pennywise, they touched that his real form, because he's a shapeshifter, his real form is light which doesn't make much sense to me. Thought that was kind of stupid. Don't really know how like that makes sense even, how he's light. I think that's what they said. They never really explained it in depth in my mind. At least not enough for me to give you a sure, 100% sure answer. I'm like 90% sure it was light. But they, it was just, that's just stupid. It's stupid. It's stupid. Uh, The whole loss of memory thing, a lot of the... The kids all lost their memory when they moved away, except the one that stayed there. Uh, he obviously he remembered everything because he stayed in Derry, whereas everyone moved away and then forgot the whole Pennywise clown thing, which doesn't really make much sense to me. I don't. They never. That was something they really never explained. They just said because one guy stayed there, he remembered it. And they moved away. They all forgot it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Which. Like I said, why, why would moving away cause that? It's a very big hole they left, and I feel they was just... I, they never even went and tried to explain that, which is a big grind in my gears. Excuse me. And there was also a 
forced, what I felt like was a felt forced love triangle. Uh, keep it out of there. I get there are some kind of feelings in the beginning of the movie, but they were really trying to push on the whole love triangle thing in here, in my opinion. Felt forced, unnecessary. Once again, could have been just as good or better of a movie if they left the, that element out. Uh, the way the character discovered it, what it was, felt like a very last minute idea. He spent some time with like a Native American tribe and took some of their drugs and they explained it to him or something. Felt very last minute to me and they were kind of maybe felt like they were just like had the whole film made and like, oh, like, what, what, how can we have them know what it is? Oh, well, uh, no, the, the, the Native American tribe, you can take their drugs. Got it. That's kind of what it felt like to me. Felt that if they really put their heads together, the people behind the scenes, they could have made a lot better of a sense of a reason what it was. I think that's just was a really stupid thing. And the ending really drowned out. Right when you thought the movie would end, it would keep going. It is a two, I think the official runtime is two hours, 49 minutes. Uh, cut that down, please. It was much longer than it needed to be. My opinion, I would say maybe two and a half hours would have been perfect at the max. Uh, like I said, it just kept going and going and going. I thought it would end. And then there's a whole nother scene and it's just going and going and going. And it's like, by the time the re ending rolled around, like the ending sequence, and it, where it really started drowning on, I was just ready to get up and go. I was tired of it. I just wanted to finally see those credits roll. Uh, but with all that being said, it does get a score. And because of those reasons, I believe It Chapter 2 deserves a 6 out of 10. It was a good movie, still better than the average movie, I would say, but the things that were wrong with it just felt... I feel like they didn't really think hard enough on those, on those things. If they really would just really put their heads together, this could have been another 8, 9 movie, in my opinion, but a lot of things felt forced and rushed. Um, you do not have to see the first movie, the first, it chapter one, if you will, to see this one. They do, due to the flashbacks, it does, it clears up a lot of things that you wouldn't know if you didn't see the first one. Uh, but I would highly, highly recommend seeing the first one before this, as it, then you won't have to go in with any worry whether you know what's going on or not. It would substantially help you, but it is not necessary, I guess, when it comes down to it. At chapter 2, 6 out of 10. Alright, well, those are my two reviews. They're in the books. They're going in the books. And let tell me what you think. Like, the like, subscribe. Let me know what you thought of each movie in the comments, whether you agree with me, disagree with me, your likes, your dislikes. Let me know what you thought of it. Um, and like I said, subscribe for more movie reviews. I'll keep these coming, like I said. I'll try and keep videos coming weekly. Uh, so yeah, I got a lot more work ahead of me. A lot more movies to review. There will always be movies to review, let's face it. So I'll be doing this for quite some time, I believe. Uh, that's it, but until until then, change the world. See you guys.